Hey guys, Miss Jagger here, and welcome back to Armored Warfare. Woo! <coughs> Woo! There we go. And welcome to the Panhard ERC 90F4 review. Now, before we get started with the review, I've got a few things I'm going to talk about. First of all, because this is Armored Warfare, and because normally in my other tank reviews in World of Tanks, which is still going to be kind of probably the similar vein, uh, I tend to go on into the details about pretty much nearly every uh, aspect of the vehicle in question regarding uh, the tank itself. Now, in Armored Warfare, this game is a little bit different because not only do you get to customize the stats to a degree of the vehicle, which means not everything you see is 100% guaranteed to be the actual passive stats, and also because, well, I kind of want to try and do a bit of a shake-up in the way I review things, at least on this, is uh, I'm going to try and shorten the talking aspects of it. It's a hard habit to break, so I apologize if I do drone on in some bits. Um... But there you go, I'll ho you know, hopefully these talking sections won't be as long. And I'll probably mention a few of the important aspects of the vehicle, something that really sticks out for me, or something that really pretty much everyone will see or everyone will understand, and then be able and then sort of communicate that before going on into another thing. So for example, some things I'll talk about is the maneuverability, maybe the gun, or just how either amazing or whatever it is, but I'll try and sort of keep things to a minimum. The second thing I'm gonna talk about is I've technically done this review before. Uh, previously, I had intended this review to be only a player versus environment mainly because I personally play this game more as a player versus environment rather than the PvP as I get my fix from that in World of Tanks. So, I personally enjoy playing the PvE more, but... Uh, and I also had the review pretty much all wrapped up. I had like the, I've got footage from that, which I will be using in this video because it's still good footage. It's just it was all previously all PVE. However, last week on Friday's stream, I did play this particular tank a couple of times in the PVP environment, and I actually found myself doing quite well in them. So I will mention a couple of good things regarding the PVP players, but a note to future engagements. I primarily go with PvE on vehicles, so um, you might not... PV, P, PvP players may not entirely have everything they're looking for here, but there are still elements which I will be talking about uh, in PvP points. Just a couple of points, but primarily PvE. Anyway, so thank you very much for listening to that one, and let's get started with the review of the ERC 90F4. So, the Panhard ERC 90F4. This is a French Tier 5 tank destroyer, which you can get to by going through the Wolfie Tech Tree, then going down the Dragoon 90 and LAV 300. And I will say, this is my favorite Tier 5 tank destroyer. Um, but at first, it wasn't. I, in fact, really didn't like this vehicle. But that was because I made a couple of mistakes. The first mistake was that I did not treat this vehicle correctly. Um, I went to this vehicle, and I gave her the wrong tactics. And I assumed that, you know, the tactics that I would use with other vehicles would be fine, and that I wouldn't have to worry or whatever. But no, I, w I made the wrong... I, I, I utilized the wrong tactics with this thing. And second, when I went into this tank at first, I made the wrong assumption that she would just be naturally better in loads of regards, like higher penetration, higher damage, all that sort of thing, because she was tier 5. Um... For example, it's a bit like World of Tanks when you go from a Hetzer to a Stug. The Hetzer, while it has the same gun as the Stug, or at least the same caliber of gun, you do get better damage in Alpha, uh, sorry, penetration in Alpha. For example, from the L48 to the L70, major differences between the vehicles. Much better pen, much better Alpha, you know, loads of things. And that was the kind of mistake I made with this vehicle going from the LAV300. So having a look at the stats of this thing, you'll see that the stock value of this gun when using armor piercing is only 218 millimeters and only having 317 alpha. Now as stock values, it's okay. It's not great, but okay. But I was surprised to see that when upon upgrading the ammunition, it was only going to increase this uh, alpha and pen by a smaller value. The penetration, oh, sorry, the penetration went up from 218 to 229. And the alpha went up from 200, sorry, 317 to 333. So, in my eyes, I was a bit like, what? Yeah. I, 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 I was a bit like, I was expecting like 235 or 240 sort of thing with the mistake that I made there. As I said, it was a mistake. I have learned from that, don't worry. Uh, the heat ammunition, um, when initially playing, I kind of gave up. Now, bearing in mind, um, when I played this vehicle at first, I wasn't doing PvP. 
We'll go into how I feel about PvP in a second, but primarily I was playing PvE, uh, in which when you're at Tier 5, you are now allowed, where you get to basically go into harder missions at Tier 5. And unlike player versus player, which in which when I did go player versus player last week in my live stream, I found that the matchmaker was really nice to me at least, because I was often encountering vehicles at least uh, of at least the same type of tier, or potentially one tier above, which... When working, its, when working in its own tier, or one tier above, it actually handles, the, the ELC handles its, itself fairly well. I mean, I could pen the under Glacius of the Chieftain Mark V, that's a pretty easy tank to pen, when, ironically, uh, at least from the sides and the under Glacius. But um, other vehicles, you know, tier 6 or whatever, that was fine. You know, same goes for these vehicles. I mean, the, X, the only difficulty ones was the Layer 2 AV and the XM1, but apart from that, you know, I had... I had good times with this vehicle, uh, at least in PvP aspect. Whereas with player versus environment, the the game was kind of shaken up a bit because in player versus environment, you don't just face vehicles of the same tier. You face vehicles that are at least one, potentially two tiers above. And depending on the matchmaking you've got, i.e., if you have a plane, a friend who's in higher, who's in a higher tier vehicle, you might encounter. Or if you're working with players of higher tier, you may encounter vehicles that are two tiers higher than them. So, for example, a Leo 2A5 and M1A1. Uh, I have encountered M1A2s. Uh, same goes for... Where is it? Is it in... The, yeah. I've also encountered this thing, which if you're a player versus environment player, or if you're high tier tanker, this thing is deadly. Um, I don't know how deadly it is in player versus player, but in player versus environment, this bastard shows up. Everyone aims at him because he is an asshole. Um, so you encounter lots of nasty vehicles, which with, get with regards to the penetration that you've got... The sides of most of the vehicles that you'll encounter are very, are barely can allow your shells to go through. Even the Leo 2AV side armor is impenetrable uh, for me to a degree. Uh, like, what was it? Uh, Leopard 2, Leopard 2A5. Like, loads of vehicles at tier 6 and above are just ridiculously armored. So I completely gave up using high explosive anti tank, as that upgraded even only gave you 200 millimeters worth of pen. The Alpha is nice, but unfortunately, the penetration is not. So I gave up completely on that. I just couldn't make that work. And for a number of games, I just found this tank to be really frustrating. And it was just like, oh, this stupid bastard French tank not in working or whatever. But then I figured out the actual tactics that really work with this thing. And instead of just treating this thing like a Jagdpanther or uh, my Stug or, you know, everything that I was more of a frontline thing, I basically decided to treat this vehicle as a kind of E25. Now, the only reason why I say this is because... Of all the vehicles in water tanks that I utilize, and I don't just base everything on water tanks, but in order the best way to explain the situation is that the E25 is noted for its rapid rate of fire, and while it doesn't have great armor, pen uh, great penetration and damage, it still completely fucks over any tank that it can get its uh, get its hands on and can't react to it. This is the same thing for this vehicle. This is what I would call the Gatling gun, uh, at, at the moment the Gatling gun of armored warfare, and. The unupgraded, with no retrofits gun, gives you a 12.25 rounds per minute. Its accuracy is as... Where is it? Its accuracy is... Doesn't say. But its aiming time is only 3.10 seconds. Its accuracy spread when you fire is only 0 0.13. And its reload is only 4.90 seconds. This thing is really quick at firing. And this is before I show you the stats of this thing. Because it's better with the retrofit upgrade that I've got for it. So, with that in mind, I then figured out that when I had when I finally figured out the tactics for this thing, my games went from being rather frustrating and not earning much to instantaneous delight and glory as I'm able to do a shit ton of damage and do a shit ton in the game, resulting in myself and my platoon mates earning a fair amount of experience because not only am I helping, you know, getting myself nice amounts of damage because of that, but because I'm playing a semi-aggressive slash scouty role with it to a degree, I am able also to allow my friends to do a lot of damage as well. This thing is a great little helper, and you'll be seeing that to a degree in the replays that we have of this thing. So, let's have a look at the stats of this thing before we jump into combat. So, as said, the stats of this vehicle may be different to yours uh, because I have applied retrofits. So, and also, when you look at the upgrades, upgrade section, these particular things are showing 
stuff that is, isn't upgraded. It's not like World of Tanks where you get to see what the current stats are of the vehicle anyway. Uh, at least in these areas. You will see the stats upgraded here. So, looking at the gun first of all, the damage has been increased from 333 on the standard to 353. This is because I have put in the Experimental Propellant Mark II. This improves my damage by 6.25%, which is lovely. Doesn't increase the penetration, just the damage. Going down to sustained damage, you'll see that the reload now has gone from 4.90 to 4.34 because of this thing, the gyroscopic stabilizer, Mark I. This thing is a godsend because this not only decreases your reload time, but also um, improves your aiming time, which looking down below, you'll see is now 2.47 seconds which previously was only 3 which was previously 3.10 so even though this is the first variant mark you know this is only the mark 1 of it this thing is just fantastic already and this is what makes this thing the gatling gun so once i get better tanks like the stingray and the xm8 this thing is going to be a mother trucker on the field because it will its reload and aiming time is going to be ridiculous i mean ah oh, I am so looking forward to getting the better version of this thing. And as well, you know, getting the better fire propellant as well. Because that increases the extra amount of stuff. So all in all, this thing is amazing. It's amazing with these particular upgrades, which is fantastic. Now, my hit points are not the ones that are currently standard. I have improved them by putting a internal hull reinforcement mark too. This basically increases my amount of hit points for the tank. Now, as I said, I am an aggressive player, so I often do land myself in situations where probably I shouldn't have done. But I can, you know, quite happily, with this regard, I can actually take a couple more hit points or a couple more shots before, unfortunately, the fated death will approach. So I highly recommend, if you're a semi-aggressive player, to take this because it kind of is a bit, almost a bit of a no-brainer. But there are other upgrades as well to the hull, so it is down to what you want. But still, I took this because, well, I'm aggressive. So the speed of this thing as well is actually pretty good, being at 95.4 kilometers. And your maximum speed limit is three... Well, maximum speed limit. Your up to 32 kilometers per hour speed limit, which is a fairly good speed, is 3.90 seconds. It's not... It feels a bit sluggish at first, but then when you get into it, it is quite a powerful machine. Though you do have to go through two engine upgrades to get there. Unfortunately, beforehand, it'll take you 5.15 seconds to get up there. So... Ooh, really, really bad. Right, that's enough talking about this tank. Let's actually see this thing in action with a couple of replays. So, here we are in our replay. This is a player versus environment map, Starry Night. This is basically where we got to defend the three objectives. First being in the town, the next being in some fields, and then finally defending the last of the fields over here. Now, this is the replay system, which recently was implemented, so there will be a few glitches and bugs. Unfortunately, you can't really see what I'm aiming at 100% of the time. Like, you can't see the silhouettes like you would say in World of Tanks, so bear with it on that front. Anyway, I am joined in a platoon with Manacor in his T-72U and Nimbus in his Atatsuka artillery. So, going into the town, I immediately go towards the middle of the map because the AI does, on this difficulty, the AI does have a tendency to rush into the middle of the town and already start the capture. Which means you have to be rather you have to be rather quick in order to ensure that you don't end up having the cab taken from you. And the VFM Mark V happily drives through my gun sight, so I I oblige him with a shot. And then I roll into position to defend against the B the BMD1. I didn't actually notice the T72A until Nimbus takes him out with the artillery. So at this point, I take out the BMD1, to which then a T80 and a VFM six appears. So, already we're having to take on T-80 tanks. And I'm able to quickly take out the VFM. And the T-80 falls to the Centauro. So, you may notice whilst I'm driving this, th driving this thing, is I'm utilizing the wrecks of other vehicles a lot. As they are very good at blocking other shots. Um, I try and throw in some shots on the side of the Leopard 2 there, trying to provide support to 
mana core in his T72. And as you can see, the rate of fire on this thing is absolutely perfect. I am popping so many shells against this guy and just t causing not like great junk chunks of alpha, but certainly large portions enough to make it worthy. And the aiming time and the reload just means that whenever vehicles pop into view, you can quickly snapshot and take them out as I just knocked out that stingray, which was approaching upon my rear. So I try to roll into position to save mana core, but unfortunately one of the cars sends my truck into a bit of a weird motion, which means I am unable to help him out. But luckily for me, mana core takes care of him. So, with the town center secured, I decide to push along towards the bridge end area, as later on during the game, a lot of enemies will start spawning off the other side of this bridge, and I was trying to find a way of ensuring that I could spot them, as I believe I was the fastest vehicle in the game. I'm not too sure how fast the Centauro goes, but he was on the other side of the map, so I, do, I thought might as well start spotting. Now, here is where an important decision was made, because... This section of the map to the north here, I'll just pause it. This section of the north to the map, map, as you can see, there are a number of enemy vehicles located. There was a BMD-4 Let Lieutenant, which is basically a boss player. You've got the St Superior Stingray, which can do a lot of damage to me. And that wasn't the only vehicle there. There was other vehicles potentially throwing shots on me. Not to mention there was also a Bagel Panzer located towards this area. Now... As, as I said before, this vehicle has no armor whatsoever, so to remain in this upper position here, whilst it would help me get either spots or damage, would result more likely in my death or severe damage, because these two guys would pepper me stupid with a lot of these shots and holes. So I decided to do a bit of a withdrawal, take a bit more cover, take a couple of shots on my way back, but I'd rather have a couple of shots in my rear than uh, a whole shit ton to my front. And enemy paladin has been sighted. Unfortunately, my gun elevation not helping me out there much. And paladin, I try and get a shot in, but Nimbus luckily takes him out. So now I reverse my way back up. Enemy BMD4 lieutenant. I spot. I pop. Not a high roll, unfortunately. Only doing 336. But luckily now, the enemy tanks have been destroyed. So now that reinforcements are here, I can take a bit more of an aggressive line, but still remaining semi-close to tanks. And Bagel Panzer goes down in a fury. And then my worst fear approaches. The frag Even though it's a fragile, it's still an auto cannon. That thing can do a crap ton of damage if left alone. And as such, we throw the damage onto him. So with the threat of the BMP Terminator knocked out, I decide to be slightly more aggressive. But as you can see, enemy tanks popping shots and it's a Ramka and a BMD. So I prioritize firing on the BMD as a Ramka at this range is not going to be super easy to hit. As you can see, unfortunately not getting the penetrating shot there. Luckily, I was able to get the second shot in to do the final blow. Uh, and as we were rolling up, BMDP2 coming along, using the ridgeline for cover. And then a T90MS appears. <laughs> and even in its fragile state, the T90MS, very nearly hitting me there, can still do a lot of damage to myself. So I decided to use these two rocks for cover. Trying to hide it. I think I shot into the rock there with that previous shot. So... Oh dear, not so good. But this reload, I absolutely love because it basically means you can, you know, select what target you will. And while trying to get a shot in on the T90MS, he has prioritized me as a target. Trying to do something, not really able to do much. And Nimbus steals the kill at the last moment. So, oh well. Protect the farm, so now that, the, now that the new and last objective is made, I basically rush across to try and get the spots in as enemy vehicles will be approaching from the north there. I spot a shot from artillery being fired over here, and I'm unsure why I didn't spot it when I rolled right next to it. I didn't know if there was like a pre, uh, proxy spotting system. But two enemy tanks spawned to my front, and two enemy tanks... Oh, my front, and two enemy tanks spawned to my rear. So trying to use the environment to hide myself so that only one avenue of fire can be made... I focus on taking out the P Bagel Panzer and the BMP before making a move on the VFM, unfortunately getting shot in the process, but eh, a worthy sacrifice as I'll be able to trade slightly more than he will. But trading in this thing is not really recommended, only if other people can trade with you. I get a nice critical hit of 419, resulting in that tank's death. I am so determined to find the artillery from this position because artillery was firing from here. But for some reason, it remains unspotted. I don't exactly know why, because I did see a shell go over the top. But unfortunately, no luck. 
Anyway, enemy group of enemy tanks are approaching. I prioritize trying to get shots in on that Bagel Panzer. And Bagel Panzer goes down. Then I throw shots in towards the VFM Mark V. Trying to see if I can get a good shot in. Then I spot the TM8 Thunderbolt, who is a big threat. Even at this tier, and even if he's a fragile, the M8 Thunderbolt is powerful. I nick the kill on the, on the VFM. And also, I nick the kill on the Thunderbolt. So, totally t kill stealing like a ninja pro. But worth it. Anyway, two remaining Bagel Panthers appear. I pop a shot, stealing the last damage of that one. Taking my time on the next one. And... There is the end of the mission. So, a relatively quick-esque mission, but luckily, thanks to the maneuverability and the rapid fire of this vehicle, we were able to do a fairly decent amount of damage and also some decent amount of spotting. So, I'll see you now in the replay results. So, here are the results of that game. A ridiculously nice amount of damage. 8,285 and 7.997 spotting damage. I also spotted 23, which was very nice. I think I spotted the most out of the entire crew as well. Oh, that was that was fun though. I have to admit that particular map, utilizing the terrain, close couple of calls, but utilizing the terrain to my advantage, was able to give me the ability to not only spot but also to get a fair amount of damage in there, and also to kind of show up some of the tier six players on that night. But as you can see, you know, had I not withdrawn from the conflict earlier, when we were coming up for the second objective, I really I could have easily lost way more hit points. And potentially could have died later on had I stayed aggressive. So instead of that, you should just pull back, hold off for a little bit, try and just spot and hold back. And then when your allies come up to provide support, that's when you charge up the line and start throwing out the shells at the enemy with increased vigor. Anyway, I'll now jump over to the second game. And here we are for the second and last game of the video. We are on the map Scorpio, and in this mission, we are mainly we are aiming to capture a bridge held by enemy forces around an enemy dam. The bonus objectives being to destroy black market shipments, which are located around here and in around the town, as well as located around the objective. I am now platooned up with Nimbus he, in his Type 92, and it's, and we tend we're actually doing a slightly different tactic as most people tend to go down this long road here. We're now actually going to go around the rear to be able to get some good spots in on the enemy who might try and outflank us, as well as trying to get those bonus objectives early. Enemy has support disabled. So anyway, the game starts, and instead of rolling in first, I allow, Nim I allow Nimbus decides to push on first, and you know, being myself being a lightly armored vehicle, I am happy with this particular arrangement. You, mo you will definitely see a little bit of a tactic coming along here. First shot of the game fires into the side of an enemy T90 MS, doing a fairly decent amount of damage. For some reason, Nimbus was having a bit of a weird glitch going on in this particular game, where, um, or at least I think in this particular session, as he couldn't really see the silhouettes, and there's some friendly ramming damage there, he couldn't see the silhouettes of enemy vehicles, uh, and instead had to focus on tanks he actually had, you know, he could actually see. So, in this, I take out the BMP, and so Nimbus focusing instead now on the enemy Terminator. I would try and pop shots against the T90MS, who was luckily showing me his side armor. Trying desperately to get some decent shots in. Almost got the kill. And not quite got the ability to kill the T90MS. But then Nimbus decides to roll on and take him out for me. But as you can see with this particular game, I'm not going too far away from Nimbus. I'm basically providing him some cover. And he'll be providing with me some cover. Because while Nimbus may not be able to be as maneuverable to go around the flanks. You will see at points where this two style of unison play is actually really helpful especially if, for example, you're slightly low tier in a high tier environment. So, the getting a nice decent shot on the Stingray 2, having missed before. Second, another shell goes in, but unfortunately hits the ground in front of me. So now rolling into position. Another shell going into the ground. Not really helpful there, but Stingray decides to withdraw. Nimbus going on the right-hand side of the building to spook the Stingray 2 player out. AI out. Enemy Bagel Panzer on low health, so once again, kill stealing like a pro. Uh, and then the Stingray 2 decides to appear, but thanks to the DPS, bam, here's another tank on fire and gone. So I knock out the objective, and enemy Leopard 
to A6, pops into view, and then I spot a Stingray, I fire the Stingray, and enemy Thunderbolt decides to appear. I'm still focusing on the Stingray, so popping as many shells as possible. I take a bit of a hit, and that is a big hit, so naturally as I reverse, cue the M1 Abrams. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, sure, as I try and run away. So I've got a Thunderbolt to my front. Nimbus takes out the Thunderbolt. Um, oh, no, the Centauro 120 takes out the Thunderbolt. And I'm panicking that chat saying, Nimbus, 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 Nimbus. Tank, 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 tank. So Nimbus charges the M1 Abrams. And this is what I'm going to be talking about when it comes to working with other tanks. Whilst the M1 Abrams is prioritizing shooting at Nimbus, I go around the flanks trying to hit that guy's ammunition rack and Nimbus sets him on fire, which then results in the M1 Abrams death. And then almost instantly after the M1 Abrams dies, I hide behind the M1 Abrams to try and utilize him as cover as I set fire and kill the enemy Stingray too. And my amazingly crap shot means that I have to take another shell to deal with that objective. But luckily, once again, the DPS on this thing, which I am actually falling in love with, uh, saved my arse and makes, allows me to fire another shot re relatively quickly. So another decent shot in goes in to the VFM Mark V. Another, two sh another shot goes in. Not as high damage roll this time. And can I steal the kill? Yep, you bet. And then an enemy M1A2 Abrams and artillery is spotted. So we naturally focus on taking out the artillery. And that's when a whole swathe of enemy heavy tanks decide to appear. So now we're taking severe fire. I'm trying to have shots in on the Leopard 2A6s, but with no luck. So instead, I prioritize shooting at the Abrams. Uh, well, no, first of all, go for the VMP, sorry. Then I start shooting at the Abrams. And the funny thing about this one is, I don't know whether it's because it's salvaged or whatever, but the side of the Abrams is weaker than the side of a Leopard 2A6, which means I can pretty much deprive that Abrams of a lot of hit points. I try a shot on the Leopard 2, but then I give up and prioritize shooting at the Abrams, to which then he starts his set alight. I pop a shell to finish off the Abrams, making him look like a rather silly tank. It's at this point, however, that I start taking a bit of fire from other vehicles um, that I was unfortunately unspotted for me. So I take a nasty 310 hit there, and I'm trying to get shots in on other vehicles, still not learning my lesson, try and avoid it. I, I avoid one shot, thinking I can get another shot in to get the Leopard 2A6. Unfortunately, it's a bounce. And then another shell reminds me I shouldn't really be on the front line, so I use my repair kit to restore my health all the way up to top and try and get a shot in on this Stingray. And luckily I bounce. I, that is one of the first few bounces I've had <laughs> so far. And so I'm like, yeah, probably a good idea for me to, instead of, you know, expose myself to fire like that, that was the tank, enemy Stingray 2 that was spotting me. So in this one, I use the speed to go around the flank to get shots in on vehicles when unfortunately enemy T-72A, a BMP-3, and another T-72, which will appear in a few seconds, appear to start throwing th threats at me. So I'm prioritizing shooting at the BMP-3. I fire and maneuver to avoid getting shot. There's the enemy T-72A. So unfortunately, unable to provide Nimbus with too much assistance on the matter. He was looking at me, which is slightly unnerving when you see that kind of tank, especially when it's upgraded. And then a Stingray appears. So this thing is determined to shoot at me. Stingray plants a shot into me, doing a nasty amount of damage. Stingray take a bit of damage and relocate to try and get some shots in. Unfortunately, the mountain decides to slide me down a bit. I try and prioritize a shot. Unfortunately, the first shell misses, but the second shell, in revenge of Nimbus's death, is put in. But Nimbus luckily has his own repair kit, or um, full restore kit. I'm not entirely sure how it is. I'm just going to call it the repair kit, which allows you to restore yourself if you die in the game without using it to 60% of your hit points and refill, refill on ammunition. So rolling over to find this sneaky bonus objective tucked away to the side, I then roll into position and provide some assistance towards Nimbus once more. Enemy VFM Mark V providing himself a bit of a pain to the enemies. Then I spot the enemy Stingray, which has been giving us a bit of trouble. I pop the shell and the T-72A knocks out the Stingray. Fortunately, my next shell not quite connecting there with the enemy VFM Mark V. So, this game has been pretty tense so far. I mean, we've, we've, ta we've engaged loads of enemy vehicles, taken on a variety of tanks. We've taken on tank main battle tanks, lightly armored tank destroyers, 
and enemy um, AF, uh, IFVs. Then, a T90MS decides to spawn right behind Nimbus, resulting in me desperately trying to get up to the top to provide assistance. Unfortunately, I thought this vehicle could be gone through, but it's not, and then my vehicle natches onto the side, immensely frustrating, as Nimbus is taking a lot of damage there. I'm desperately trying to get shots in on the side, but that bloody armor is not letting me through. Bam! Shut the T90 town. And as those vehicles popping their way through, I roll into position to try and take out the enemy bonus. There is a bit of a weird glitch going on. There was less than a minute to go for this thing. Well so that vehicle, so now that bonus is done. VFM Mark V. I bounce for some reason on his front, and then I try to ram him, only doing a little amount of damage, but finally able to kill him, resulting in the end of the game. So a very crazy and relatively quick game uh, of of a hard PVE there, but nonetheless really good. And hopefully, although maybe not to be able to describe it perfectly, you did see at least the tactics I utilized in that. I basically stuck close to Nimbus's tank to ensure that while he provides me with more armored protection from enemy vehicles, I can go around the flanks to enemy vehicles that my gun previously wouldn't be able to penetrate outflanking them, getting good shots on them, and being able to assist him in either taking out the target or potentially taking the target for myself, as well as a nice bit of damage. So a nice two-way working system is actually really useful when you're having this vehicle in motion. Anyway, now I'll take you to the results of that game. So, arguably one of my best games in this tank so far. We did a massive... 10,823 damage we spotted for nearly 10k and we also spotted 21 vehicles we gained 5,310 experience and earned 172,000 credits I mean oh so good so so good and ironically although my good friend Nimbus sadly died in that mission and got more damage than everyone else. I was actually on second because of either, or most likely because of the spotting, but we even put a tier 7 tank to shame. So even though the Centauro 120 is the tank I'm currently working for, I actually did slightly better than. <laughs> I am happy with those odds. And then, of course, we had the other particular vehicle, which, unfortunately, I feel sorry for those guys because they didn't probably get to do as much. But then again, they didn't really charge into the fray. So, there you have it. 10,000 damage, 9k spotting, 21 vehicles spotted, and I made the enemy team look a bit silly in the process. That is what I call a good victory. So, the Panhard ERC 90F4. Summary time. This tier 5 tank destroyer is definitely one of my favorite tier 5 tank destroyers. I mean, as I said, it's awesome. And while it lacks the high penetration and high alpha of some of the other tank destroyers out there, it still kicks ass and takes names with its ridiculous rate of fire, great accuracy whilst not only standing still but also on the move, and a whole bunch of other things. Its scouting capacity, its maneuverability. Yeah, it's a wheeled tank destroyer, which means you can't instantly do a 180 and turn around like normal tank tracked vehicles. It still can be highly maneuverable, and its gun depression makes it worthy of any. You can, it makes it beautiful around in most terrains. It is glorious. <laughs> And for that, I love it, and definitely it is worth having if you fancy either playing PvP or PvE. I mean, I love playing it in PvE because, you know, it's nice sort of making the big tanks like an Abrams look stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching this, and thank you very much for watching this style of review. If you like this style, do let me know in the comments section down below, and I shall happily continue on. Or, if you feel that there should be improvements on parts, do let me know, and I will try and make the next review and different styles of it, Impre you know, either adding more detail or less detail, depends on how you feel. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next time. This is Miss Jager, signing out.